We know there is no love lost between these Eastern Conference foes. It's game three from MSG. Bronson and the Knicks got a split in Cleveland. Could Donovan Mitchell and the Cavaliers regame home court live from the garden? You saw Mitchell strike first with the score. But this game was controlled by not who the Knicks struck out on last offseason, but it's about who the Knicks did acquire. And that's Jalen Bronson. Bronson continues to be a man amongst boys. Yesterday's price ain't today's price. You better do the right thing. Y'all see what I did there? Knicks in transition off the turnover. It's RJ Barrett throwing it down. An 11 point lead. As we go into the third, more Barrett using his strong hand. And then another lefty to another lefty. It's Bronson finding Julius Randle, who throws it down. This New York fan base is losing their minds. Darius Garland trying to lead a Cavalier comeback. He wind up just leading himself into a cameraman and rolling that ankle as you see Garland just trying to make a play for his team. Finished with 10 points. Mitchell had 22.7 rebounds and five assists as well. But again, this game was about the Knicks coming to play. It's OB Toppin with the old alley-oop. And then Emmanuel quickly knocks it down for three. A good old New York Knickerbocker reunion took place in the fourth. How about Brunson going and one, dapping up John Starks, the former Nick point guard. Here's the new Nick point guard again scoring. Latrell Sprewell and my vol for life slash New York Nick great Bernard King loving how the Knicks are playing as they roll to a game three victory. 99 to 79 over the Cavaliers. Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers got hit in the mouth in game three by Jalen Brunson and the New York Knicks. Could the Cavs respond in game four at MSG? The answer early was no, as Brunson knocks in another three. And then JB off his pivot, a 15 point first half for Brunson. He dishes to Mitchell Robinson there for the and one. And then Bronson from downtown again in the second. New York's up by 15 points. And be clear, he was not alone in game four. How about the performance from RJ Barrett? Had an up and down season. He's making up for it. These two games here at the Garden. Even when Bronson misses, good things are happening. Mitchell Robinson with the putback jam. Third quarter, here comes Cleveland. Garland inside to Evan Mobley. And then Garland this time on a do-it-himself mission. We're tied at 59. Game still tied. It's Garland up top this time. He went to Jared. It's Jared Allen with the throwdown. Former All-Star to former All-Star. Got Cleveland out in front by Deuce. We're still in the third. Isaac Okura is going to get rejected. Other end we go. It's RJ Barrett for show. Knicks go back out in front. It's Bronson stopping, popping, and pulling the three-pointer as we close out the third. New York regains control. With all these lefties, I don't want to be forgetful of the performance of Josh Hart. He was also big in this one. Bronson, another three. He had 29 points. And then R.J. Barrett closing out another New York Knicks home victory he had a playoff career high 26 and the Knicks beat the Cavs once again 102 93 is your final New York now in the driver's seat with a three games to one series lead the New York Knicks in their three victories in this series every game they've won they've held the Cleveland Cavaliers to under a hundred points Unbelievable defense against the NBA's best defensive team in the regular season statistically. You know, I got to admit to you guys unbiasedly. Look, and I don't even like New York. I've been to New York many times in my life. I can't stand being in New York. I'm just being honest with you guys. It's not for me. I'm a down south guy. I like backyards. You know, too many people on top of each other. For me, 
I'm not a fan of New York. I'm not. But let me be real with y'all. There is nothing like having the New York Knicks in the playoffs. There's just nothing like it. You, you Look, New York is an acquired taste. Either you like it or you don't. It's like beer. For me, I don't care for it. But I can admit to you, unbiasedly, there is just nothing like having the Knicks in the playoffs. That building, Madison Square Garden, is just electric with the Knicks playing good ball. And, the, and New York has had some expectations many different years under many different regimes with many other st- stars, guys that you expected more out of, the Amari Stoudemire, Carmelo Anthony era, pretty much went nowhere. You look at just a couple years back when the Knicks got back to the postseason and then obviously a year ago with, with against Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks, and Atlanta ended up beating the Knicks in the first round. You know, this year, though, it feels different. You know, New York is is now up three games to one. Either they can close this thing out in Cleveland in games five or seven, or maybe they do it in game six on their home court. New York in the second round of the playoffs. And, hey, look at how things have played out. We don't know what's happening with Giannis Antetokounmpo right now. What if the Knicks close out Cleveland and their second round matchup is against the Miami Heat? I mean, you're talking about a whole different world. Julius Randle had some really good games against Miami in the regular season, which speaking of Julius Randle, Randle has not been anywhere close to the storyline of this series like many of us thought he would. Obviously, I thought, you know, his health would be the biggest piece to the Knicks either winning or losing. That's not been the case. As a matter of fact, Coach Thibodeau of the Knicks decided not to roll with Julius down the stretch of game four. And guess what? It worked out in his favor. He rolled with Obi Top and Mitchell Robinson and those dudes, and it worked out in his favor. The Knicks took care of business. According to Coach Thibodeau, it's not about Randall's not, not playing well or anything like that. It's more about his conditioning, coming back from an ankle injury super early. This has been about Jalen Brunson. He's controlled the tempo, controlled the pace. He, you know, he's been everything for New York. Look, I knew, I knew, I knew Brunson would be – a really good acquisition for the Knicks, but even I couldn't have in my wildest dreams imagined this dude to be this good, especially in the playoffs for New York this year. He is just controlling the game. There's levels to this. And even though Donovan Mitchell's probably a better individual talent than a Jalen Bronson, many would argue even Darius Garland, just straight up talent for talent, he's got more tricks in his bag than Jalen Bronson does, maybe. Evan Mobley, you might even argue he's got more to his game than Jalen Brunson when you incorporate how great of a defender Mobley is. Look, all that stuff is null and void right now. When Brunson's got the ball in his hands, his IQ is on 10, and he's making good sound plays more times than not. And when I get back to Dallas having an opportunity to lock this dude up last year, you know, Dallas owner Mark Cuban, you know, he's put it like, yo, I never really had a real chance to lock up Brunson. His dad, Rick Brunson, they were heading to New York anyway. Rick obviously tied to that Knicks organization already. Jalen was going to New York anyway. All I'm saying is whatever it should have took to make Jalen feel good about the Dallas Mavericks at the time compared to what the Mavericks might have to play, a guy in Kyrie Irving, again, if you look, at, at the, the player cards, you say, if I can have Kyrie or Jalen Brunson, you take Kyrie, right? But when you actually identify the games and go through what these dudes give you night in, night out, the lack of drama that's there with Jalen Brunson versus the drama that's been present with Kyrie Irving's career, it looks like one of the worst moves in NBA history for the Dallas Mavericks to be on the verge of potentially paying Kyrie Irving Two and a half times more what they could, what what the Knicks end up paying Jalen Brunson. That looks ridiculous right now. Kyrie Irving can't lead a team to the second round of the playoffs. His Brooklyn Nets couldn't win a game against the Boston Celtics last year. His Dallas Mavericks couldn't make the play in tournament this year. Jalen Brunson is shining. Now that, that Knicks signing looks like a steal. For what they paid Brunson. He's been the best Nick. RJ Barrett picked it up at MSG. Bravo to the Knicks, man. They got to take care of business. 
and close out this series, we shall see Donovan Mitchell's going to go into that survival bag, and he's one of the best scorers we got in the league, and he can iso ball you to one win. I don't think he can do it four times, but with the Cleveland Cavaliers season on the line in game five, it will be the Donovan Mitchell show. I believe that to be true. Even then, the Knicks will still have the series lead with a chance to close it out in six or seven if they need it. I am, I'm not going to lie to you guys, shocked by how great the Knicks have been against the Cavs in this series thus far without Julius Randle, for the most part, playing great. 